How would you distill the essence of a miniature tabletop war game into a game of the board variety? What if you didn't fancy lugging your case of foams down to your friendly local gaming store today, but you still wanted to scratch that itch all the same? My name is Benji, and this is the top 10 board games that could tickle the fancy of even the most hardcore mini wargamer. Now as with any list, it needs its rules, and so before we count from 1 to 10, here they are. It will not include what I call traditional war games, often coming with hexes and representing a period in history. This is an industry in and of itself, and would require a hundred picks to keep everyone happy. But in order to keep this well clear of the miniature wargaming space, as well it will not include any games with measuring devices of any kind, that track and enable movement of your characters and units. And I must say, I think that just about covers it. Let's go from least to most complex. Number 1. Funkoverse. Yep, you heard that right. Put aside your cynicism for just one second, because this team-based skirmish game with squares, not hexes, and pretty much bang on production values across the board, is much more than just a lazy, IP bulging, merchandise touting, tie-in, masquerading as a board game. No, it's got some game, and let me just say this, if you want a beer and pretzels version of a miniature war game, then this might be it. Furthermore, this is the absolute perfect gateway drug to introduce your little meeples to the wonderful world of objective based kill or be killed action. I honestly couldn't think of a better way to ease into this list. You've got dice rolling, you've got abilities with cooldowns, you've got missions and scenarios, all the good pieces are here. Number 2. Monolith Arena gives me the absolute feels of a war game mixed with chess. Now why would that interest a miniature war gamer? Well if your thing is board positioning and you ask yourself the question of how can I get my pieces in the right place at the right time then this might be the cross-synergistic board game for you. It does have two skins as well, one is fantasy based that's on screen right now, but also a post-apocalyptic version called Neurashima Hex, that incidentally has a lot more content. But in either system, the battlefield is pretty condensed, and with your hex based tiles and your different unit types that have different avenues of attack and specialisations, much like you would expect from different types of units, all of this is wrapped in a tightly bound set of rules and a pretty package too. Number 3. Warhammer Underworlds Ok, so a Games Workshop specialist box game had to make its way onto this list, because well, this is their bread and butter. The problem is a lot of their quote unquote board games are really carried by the stunning miniatures more than the elegance of their rule set. But this little deck construction game bucks that trend and then some. Sure the sexy minis are here, but playing this game grows on you and how. Each warband has its own strengths and weaknesses, and the fairly conventional movement and dice rolling for attacks and slinging spells are decided by opposed check dice rolls. But adding that card play to proceedings was a masterstroke. Not only does each player get an opportunity to play event cards between activations, but your hand is chock full of objectives, and a game of this plays over a very concise but you want to play again, three rounds. Number 4. Summoner Wars is what you get if you take away the miniatures and slim down both your units and even some basic terrain into playing cards that move up, down, left and right. Now whilst that might sound as snooze inducing as a trip to the hairdressers, it is much more than that. That's because the asymmetrical factions and units you can choose from and use to build your forces with are just that little bit special. Yes, the movement and dice rolling are nothing much to write home about, 
but when you feel so engrossed in your faction's playstyle and will live or die by their way or the highway, this becomes a game with enough mechanical nuance to keep you coming back for more and more, each time with a new team in tow. Number 5. Battle Law It's perhaps fitting that the more or less midpoint of this list is really one of a much larger game system, that being the ubiquitous Commands and Colours series of games. Designed to be a simplified wargaming system that has a small element of hand management in the commands and tactics cards you can bring to bear, but it's really the decent sized hex based board that sees you populating the battlefield like a jigsaw as two parts of a larger whole. Honestly, if only mini wargaming battlefield setup was this elegant. And then you're waging war against your opponent with an almost perfect representation of units of your lowly rank and file all the way up to the big bad creatures you can load up on. Unfortunately, this is a game that gets harder to get hold of as each year passes, so Benji did white lie a little bit at the outset about availability. But maybe you can check out Memoir 44 instead that brings historical wargaming to the same system and is much more readily available. Either way, you won't be disappointed. Number 6. Heroes of Normandy Speaking of historical wargaming, this is the game that feels most like those wargame wargames I mentioned in the preamble, except it's very clearly a board game because whilst there is some hand management sprinkled into the mix, it's the crafting of your roster using a point system any self-respecting miniature wargamer will be familiar with and transposing all the in useful information and abilities onto the square tiles that represent your units on a neatly square modular board. And then the cartoony artwork means the only challenge you'll have in joining this game is getting through the somewhat ropey all over the place rulebook. It's all here though if you want small scale skirmish action set in World War II, or the colder climes of Russia, or even the grim dark, depending on what version you get. Number 7 Hero Clicks. Was the last game to make it into this final 10, and whilst this isn't the first game on this list to boast a number of different IPs, there really is a tuck fun of content for this game out there. It's a tried and tested team based miniature fighting game system. So much so that it stood the test of time, and is still played in many a nook and cranny. Once again, a game that does its level best to present all your unit's vital statistics onto the base of your miniatures. There are, given its place on this list, quite a few tactical layers to this. It absolutely can be a pick up and play game, but using all the rules will see you reaching for all of your strategical savvy. Whether you're Star Trekking, DCing, or even WWEing, this is good old fashioned fun. Number 8. Mythic Battles is a game of two boxes. Well, a lot more than that, but you have, in essence, your pre industrial version, one that you're much more likely to get an affordable second hand copy of, and that issues any miniature people whatsoever. And then the more than once crowdfunded Mythic Battles Pantheon that goes full bombastic production with minis aplenty. But whichever version tickles your fancy will see you duelling with your team to the death. Chock full of mythical creatures and characters from folklore, there are a couple of innovations that breathe fresh air into this type of game. Not least of which is the card drafting for your armies and the need to manage your hand to ensure that your chosen unit gets to go just when it can be most impactful. A delightful new addition to the miniature board gaming landscape. Number 9. Battletech Who doesn't love big chunky combat walker robots unleashing ungodly amounts of firepower on their opponent? 
Well, this is the recipe for a game IP that was first introduced over 25 years ago now. The best part in its current incarnation is that it can even be played as a straight up miniature tabletop war game with all the usual bells and whistles. But the version I've always played is the hex based board game version. Now, it might be mostly about loading out your robots with a bunch of gun platforms and missile launchers, but that goes without mentioning the huge amount of customization you can bring to bear with the different types of mechs you can take. Those that favour mobility and tactical precision over ordnance, and vice versa. We'll see you taking down different parts of your opponent's mechs, slowing them down, disabling their weapons before taking that fatal shot where every lost unit is a hammer blow to your chances of success. And number 10, War of the Ring tells the many big battle stories and sneaky trips to Mount Doom played out in J.R.R. Tolkien's richly documented World of Lord of the Rings. At its core, this is a game that heavily pushes area control elements to get the job done, but it's also the most complex game we talk about today. Whether you're playing the Free Peoples or the Shadow Armies, it's the dice rolling that denotes the different types of action you can take each turn. Quite the contrast then to conventional mini war games. But it's the overall feel of moving your units, recruiting troops and managing your key characters that likens this in so many ways to a large scale, objective based, highly thematic game that brings the grand scale and granularity all in one tidy package. And there you have your 10 mostly readily available board games that would more than satisfy the deepest urges of an avid miniature wargamer. There are so many more games that could have made this list if they didn't just do the dirty on us and go out of print. And we're highlighting some of these on screen now as I utter these words of summary before I bid you my goodbyes. I really do hope you found this list helpful and equal parts inspirational. There's this big world of board games out there, mini wargamers. Take note and mix it up a little. And please do let me know in the comments what you might have added to this list. Alas, I have been your host Benji and this is him telling you that this video has ended. <laughs>